Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we are going to do a little, a short little video here, maybe our first video, um, on some units. Going to do a quick little preview of some metric units. We'll look at how we're going to manipulate maybe some units, and then just a quick little idea how units might be approached with graphing. Um, Alright, so metric, again, we're going to go pretty quick here, get a couple key ideas, and then move on, but... Uh, a, a metric unit has a base, which might be, let's say, for just in the, the, the it describes a type um, of stuff we got on here. So length um, is going to measure in a meter, which would be an m, and of course the mass would be a kilogram. Uh, I'm just going to put down a gram on there for now. We haven't talked about the um, the prefix yet, but you see kind of where we're going here. Uh, gram, which is G, and then volume is going to be a liter. Okay, so that tells us the type of measurement. And there are others, for example, a joule is going to be energy. Um, Alright, so the prefix can then tell us you know, how big is this thing. And the magnitude is be another way of saying that. So this is our standard, real simple um, powers of 10 um, um, prefixes. So, for example, I don't have anything written here for base because it could be any base. Um, we have, for example, if we put a meter in here, then we would have one meter would equal 10 decimeters. Um, in this case, uh, this could also be written as, um, in this case, it'd be 0 0.1 decimeters, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 meter um, equals one decimeter, or a decimeter is um, one times ten to the negative one. Uh, that's another way of saying that's one. That's basically point one of a of a meter okay so sometimes you'll see this might be written as 10 to the negative one well, that's referring to based off your base unit it's one tenth of that don't see it with decimeter very often but you will see it with a bigger more of a, a broader view you might see it as a 10 to a negative power and we'll hopefully see some of that more as we go from this again we're just kind of cruising along here um, one of the things I tell students is that from this base unit to the outer edge here, milli, is 1,000. So one meter is equal to 1,000 uh, millimeters, or um, it is point zero zero um, over three spots, zero, one, one, two, three, four. So we're going to go one less here, point zero zero one. Uh, meters is equal to one millimeters okay and then in this case over here we have going the other way is also a thousand one kilometer is equal to one thousand mill uh, one thousand meters I don't generally like to think of it moving this decimal I just think it as one of the big guys equals many of the small ones so from top all the way to the bottom is uh, a million so one big guy equals a million small guys um, and there you go so quite often we'll think of this guy as being uh, well a million means 10 to the 10 to the sixth this is equivalent to saying 1 times 10 to the sixth or they might just shortcut just go 10 to the sixth so whenever you see this they're just taking out the one t multiplying it times one but uh, in this case, since we're measuring from the base unit, a, a kilo is generally considered uh, 10 to the third, means it's a thousand times more than the base unit. Just like a milli was one thousandth negative. A micro will be one millionth, 10 to the negative sixth. Or um, one meter equals one million so one, two, three, four, five, six spots. One 
micrometer is equal to one million meters. So in the big scale, I'm going by thousands. Quite often. This micro is very common. We'll see it all over the place. Another way of saying this is that, um, you know, one micrometer is one millionth of a meter. So you take your one, you go over six spots. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five zeros. And this is going to be a meter. Um, another way of saying that is this essentially is 10, 10 to the negative sixth. One, two, three, four, five, sixth that meters is equal to one micrometer. So that is just some math there for you. Um, things that we will see here and there. Um, nano would be then 10 to the negative ninth or one billion nanometers equals one meter. Okay. Um, this would be a mega capital M, giga capital G some things involving the metric system. Unit manipulation. Okay, so here's an example of some unit manipulation. Um, speed, a lot of us have very dealt with speed. You travel a certain amount of distance over some amount of time, you have a speed. So the units on this thing would be simply you're dividing. So the unit is distance, let's say meters, divided by time, let's say seconds. So my unit is meters per second. Um, if I were to take some other hypothetical, let's say distance times time, and in this way, my units would be meters times seconds. That would be my units. So units are very important here. Whatever we're doing mathematically, our units will mimic it. So let's take a second here and take speed, and let's multiply that times one over time. That's an alternate way of dividing. So I could say exactly the same thing as a speed divided by time. Um, so speed over change in time, speed over change in time, speed over change in time happens to be what we call acceleration. Pretty important idea. So let's look at the units. So we have speed is meters per second, that's this guy. And multiply times one over seconds, and of course just fractionally wise, whenever we you know, whenever we multiply fractions, we just multiply across the bottoms and get meters times one is meters. Seconds times seconds is seconds squared. And meters per second squared is my unit for acceleration. Okay. Well, let's take speed divided by time. Um, in this case, let me just get this out of here. We'll start over. Uh, I have speed, which is going to be meters per second divided by time, which is seconds. I mentioned these are the same thing. So how do we get this into that? Okay, well, it's really meters per second per divided by seconds per over one. That's your actual unit. So the rule for, important rule, for manipulating fractions is dividing is, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's take this, it's gonna be meters divided by seconds multiplied by, let's flip this guy, one over seconds equals meters per second squared. Again, same thing. Um, I could do something crazy and just take um, these two guys and multiply them. Let's take distance divided by time times distance times time. Okay, just kind of weird. What do I get for units on this guy? Well. This guy is all top and bottom, so two distances, so it's going to be meters times meters times time divided by time. Okay, so the time will cancel, and we get meters squared. It is what it is. That's what it would be. All right, units graphing-wise. Okay, so if we were to go um, distance time graph. So this first one listed is going to be our y-axis. This will be our x-axis, and we would graph this thing out. And we would have distance right here, which would say is meters. And we have time right here, which would say is in seconds. And then, of course, your graph would just move along like so. Who knows? Um, there are two things you want to know about this graph that represent things. 
Um, the first thing is the slope of the graph. That's this guy here. The slope of the graph is the rise of the run, and it it's dividing here. We're taking the y divided by the x. So we're dividing, so this is going to be the slope, in this case is distance, divided by time. And as we saw from our previous page, no, that's not what I wanted, okay, is that distance divided by time is in fact speed. Okay, so in this case, a distance time graph, the slope actually represents the speed. And of course, a, a slope that might be going like this is a faster speed than this slope, which is a faster speed than this slope. And technically, this slope horizontal, there's no distance changing per time, so there's no speed. Um, we could have a negative slope, which just means we're going a different direction. Either way, so slope. Every slope is just the division of this by this, by the two units that we're dividing. All right, well, the area under the curve, well, that, that also is unique. And I would just say, just back one more thing, just uh, math-wise, um, so you're aware, the slope is often referred to as the derivative. Derivative means slope of graph. All right, so we have this other thing, which is the area under the curve. That might represent something. Well, it's literally if this were, let's just redraw this thing, and let's just say you're traveling um, at a, dis you know, like this, and you stop. Okay, this is my y, this is my x. Okay, I want to figure out this area on this curve. Well, it's kind of like a half square, so if I were to, or a triangle, I guess, one half base times height, so the area on this curve. Um, would simply be find the area. If it's a square, it would be just length times width. Either way, to find this area unit, we just take the y unit and multiply times the x unit. And that will give you your y times x unit. Um, that's it. The slope we divide, the area curve we multiply just for the units. A name for this guy, and also ha oh, quite often this area has has significance an integral you would take the integral of a graph and you can figure out the area under the curve um, which would represent a specific piece of information um, generally speaking a distance time graph um, you could take the area on the curve representing the um, well it'd be it'd be distance it'd be meters times so the unit would be meter second um, if you were to do a graph that would be velocity divided by time. Okay, now we're going to multiply this together. Velocity is again, uh, well, it's six speed meters per second, and multiply that times seconds. The seconds cancel. We get a unit of meters, and that's the meters covered, the distance, just distance. So, thank you very much.